I've always been interested in physics. I've always been interested in uh, alpine landscapes and climbing, stuff like that. But uh, uh, I came to glaciology a little bit uh, also by chance. You know, somehow it was the right place at the right time with the right techniques and uh, that worked out pretty well. I have a great job. I love it. Most of our job is actually done um, on the computer with satellite data. They, they have completely revolutionized the way we look at uh, polar regions. Uh, they make the whole place accessible uh, to scientific analysis. Whereas before you were limited to where you could go and how long you could stay and how long your food supply would last. Do, do you get into um, dangerous areas? Like, Have you ever had any close calls? Um, it's always dangerous in the polar regions. We always have this false sense of feelings that uh, if, if we land here, we're going to be okay, but there's nobody around. <laughs> um, in, we, we work in the ocean, uh, in the glacial fjords in Greenland, uh, close to the Calvin Front. Uh, we've been in situations where if there had been a big Calvin event, we would have been in, in trouble. We, we push the limit. We always try to um, I have a safety margin, you know, it's really important for the crew and everything else, of course, we don't want to kill ourselves doing that. But, um, yeah, close calls, yeah, sure. But, you know, I have more close calls when I cross the street in San Francisco than when I'm in the glacial fjord in Greenland. So do you need to get, uh, to capture the, the, I guess, the front of, of the action? You have to get right up close to where? Yes, right? yes. Uh, you have to look at the ice up close. You have to peer down the crevasse, you know. You have to be in contact with the ice. It's, uh, that's, that's the beauty of being in the field, is that you, you can collect measurements that are, would be very difficult to collect from uh, remote sensing platforms. What are the different ways of measuring what's happening to the ice sheets? Uh, we have many. The prime time way is to uh, look at elevation changes. Uh, it's not the best way, but that's the... Um, technique that was most readily available from satellites because to do that you have to know where your satellite is in reference to the ground and measure that very accurately so it's, it's very easy. Um, now we have uh, uh, gravity measurements from GRACE uh, which required technological advance. It was launched in 2002 so it's pretty recent. Uh, it's limited a little bit in resolution. Uh, we can only see book, big footprints or big, uh, big changes. Um, and otherwise, uh, we, uh, we have the, what we call the component approach. We look at what's going in into making changes in the ice sheet. So there's the flow of the ice, there's snowfall, there's melt. So all the surface climate is actually reconstructed by uh, models, by numerical models, which are constrained by real data, of course, right? They're not completely models. They just have the physics in there. Uh, and we do a lot of measurements of the flow of ice towards the periphery. That's, what I've been doing for pretty much most of my career uh, using satellite data. So this way you compare what's coming out at the periphery with what's coming in as snowfall and is dissipated as melt and figure out if it's in balance or not. So it's, uh, um, all these techniques have, have to mature a lot. Um, uh, the technique I just described on uh, mass budget, we started to use that in the mid 90s. Uh, but it took a good decade to, to get it up to speed and at the level of precision that we wanted. And it was not just me, it involved a lot of other people uh, to make this possible. 